It's well on the way to five million, actually. Let's have a look at the papers this morning. John Nicholl and Vicky Beeching are here. Nice to see Hi. you again, Hello. but not nice to look at the front of the Times this morning, Vicky. Looking at this case of, uh, of Marian Ibrahim, sentenced to death for marrying a Christian. Absolutely outrageous. So um, we heard recently that she'd, she'd been sentenced to death and we've now found out that she also gave birth to a baby in a prison cell while shackled in chains. And uh, I think this outrage is really appropriate, obviously, and, and for me it's a sort of double outrage because it's linked to religion. Mm -hmm. And as a Christian myself, it just horrifies me to see people of different faiths treating each other like this because her, um, her crime, allegedly, is apostasy. So um, she's been um, allegedly raised as a Muslim and then has married a Christian. Uh, but she said in her own defence that actually her mother was a Christian and she herself considered um, Christianity to be her faith. There should be no defence. You don't, you should, there you shouldn't need to be any defence. It's just no, monstrous but it's, barbarity. And it's, and it's so patriarchal because their answer to her was, well, it doesn't matter that your mother was a Christian, your father was a Muslim. So on the basis that you were raised by a Muslim father, you are considered to be an apostate and therefore sentenced to death. It, uh, there's uh, another st the, it, the story oh. uh, where we saw in Pakistan of um, uh, Farzina... Parveen being stoned to death mm. on the steps mm. of the court. There's another piece yeah, come out about similar. that. Yeah. Uh, her husband, who was seen in distress, understandably calling for justice for the killers, it's now transpired that he killed his first wife so he could marry yeah. Far, yeah. Uh, Farzana. It says, uh, I was in love with Farzana and killed my first wife because of this it's love. Unbelievable. The Women barbarity are just property, the, is just beyond yeah. comprehension. Well, actually, we're talking about, I mean, our main story about children and emotionally oh. neglect of children this way. In this case, she's already got a one year old. Yeah. She's just mm. given birth. And they, she, she'll be hanged if this oh. lasts yeah. in two years' time. And her husband's also in a um, wheelchair. He's in, but, the, yeah. but the children are being kept in the prison with mm. her. And he's worried that he won't actually have the the kind of health and strength of body to care for these children when, when they're released. I mean, hopefully a campaign like this will result in her life being saved, but if not, he's already feeling the pressure as, as a disabled father that he won't be able to... Um, the terrifying really thing is the system, the, the judiciary, the government, mm. the whole... Mm. People believe Sanctions that this is it. correct. Yeah. And it's yeah. just... Uh, we can't understand it. I can't yeah. understand why anyone can't marry anyone, regardless oh, of anything, absolutely. frankly. Absolutely. I mean, agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Seems it's a whole other argument that we could have. Well, I know, but you Let's just put the <laughs> newspapers to one side and have that argument. If you want to get married, don't care who you are, just get, do it. Why not? I swear, you know, that should, be, that should be the reality. What about One Direction, John? Okay. I know you're a big One Direction I am a One Direction. Speaking of love. Speaking of love. Yeah. So, this is a story about a boy band taking drugs. That's it. That's my, that's my contribution finished. Have they taken drugs? Well, apparently one of them, uh, Malik, is seen Zane. in a... Zane. Zane, is it? I love that Zane. you know that. <laughs> See, you've got to Zane. refer to the One Direction yeah. expert. Oh, yeah, the One Direction. Right. Zane. Apparently, he was, he's, there's a video of him in a car smoking a suspicious-looking cigarette. Right. And so my first reaction was, they're a boy band, what are you expecting here? This is, this is from the Rolling Stones to Queen to Ed, Led Zeppelin, all of these people have. I'm not condoning it, but it's normal. And then my mind is changed mm. because I then look at the tweets from 11-year-olds and 12-year-olds uh, saying, I just turned 11, I don't know what blunt is, what our blunt is, I must confess I didn't know what a blunt was either, but I want to smoke it. And then somebody else saying, I want to try smoking weed with the boys, I want to know what it feels like. And so then you think, hold on, yeah. do they really have that influence? Do 11-year-old girls, 12-year-old young... But it's interesting, this is, this is being... I mean, the, the One Direction's legal team are looking at this. They say they're going to, you know, they, they're going to examine this video and why it was released and... You know, well, it's, well, it's the naivety to video it in the first place, isn't yeah. it, really? Crackers. I, mean, I just wonder whether it's a publicity stunt. I mean, they, they do have a shelf life, don't they? I mean, they've done, done well as the good boy band. Perhaps there's some leverage to be had from becoming a bit of the bad boy band. But even if it's not... And even if, whatever they do, even it is if they're the just imagery. having a, 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 you know, a roll-up cigarette or whatever. Yeah, OK. There's, there's Look got, at the photograph. There's, there's, there's <laughs> got to be, there's <laughs> gotta be, be an element yeah. of, of freedom in all. I mean, the, mm. the car, it's living your whole life in the spotlight yeah. issue again. Well, don't stuff. video it. Whatever you're doing, don't video it. And if somebody was in the car with them, don't video it. Then, then well, there's several never, people in the car it'll with never them. Go, yeah. I mean, but to be fair, people have followed bands all the time. I mean, my sister was a great a Bay City Rollers fan. Do you remember? You probably don't know. Why are you laughing at me? None of us Bay do. City Rollers. <laughs> I'm the nearest in age to you, John, and I don't remember. Stephen's in a One Direction fan, aren't you? They yeah. used to wear tartan half mass trousers. Come on, you remember that, Steve. No. I think a lot of the parents would be quite oh, happy yeah. if their children were wearing tartan following a band rather than <laughs> basically, yeah. taking Scarves illegal around things. the wrist. They do have to realise, I mean, I know you're surprised at the, the reaction of these kids, but there is so much That's passion yeah. for One Direction. I mean, mm. literally, they could say anything and people would literally 
do it. So I do but think have they, they, always, have they do not? have to take that seriously. They're yeah. very, very young, especially girls, and they need to be role models to an extent. I know they're famous. They, I know they have to live their lives, really? but I think when you've got that kind of platform and that kind of privilege, you have to realise what comes it's with true. it. True. When I was at school, everybody was a big take that fan, and one of the yeah. members oh, of the band you mean, had a dolphin mm -hmm. tattoo on his hip, and all of a sudden, all of the girls wanted to get tattoos. Did you? No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> My mum would not okay. let me. Um, yeah. But, but you know, all right, the girls do follow. I remember when take that broke up. The girls were screaming and crying incandescent yeah. and there's they a, got there all was a it. Wasn't there? there was a helpline. <laughs> oh my gosh, I mean amazing. it's just a phase we all yeah. go through. You've got to take responsibility. You've screamed I at think. a boy band, Steve. To. Come on, we all have. I, I loved Freddie Mercury. Oh, well, yes, Freddie Mercury and Queen <laughs> in the 70s and the 80s. I don't know if they would be, uh, and as, as someone who knows Brian a little bit, very slightly, I, know, I don't know if it would wow. I'm going to tweet you a picture of me and me well, name dropping. He wouldn't, a... um, he wouldn't uh, describe himself as being in a boy you band. You know what I, I mean, a band. <laughs> I don't mean a. But they were just bands. bands. Boys, they were iconic yeah. images. That's yeah. one direction. Yeah. Take that boy. I was at the Freddie Mercury tribute concert. It's the nearest I ever got to a Queen concert. Uh, you have your leather waistcoat on, and you're the, the yellow, like Freddie Moore, you know, to strutting your stuff. <laughs> hey, oh. No, you didn't. I was, I was no 18, time John. No <laughs> I was 18, John. No, I no. didn't. Um, <laughs> let's have a look at this. Is in the mail this morning. A woman who's got text messages from. It's just so Orange. strange. Yeah. So um, I think nowadays everybody expects companies to relate to them through social media like a friend. I mean, that's the kind of typical, you know, we want to relate to the brands we know on a personal level, don't we? So um, this is a real antithesis of that. This lady's partner phoned up Orange and complained. She had a larger than normal bill. Orange claimed that it was a problem with the direct, direct debit, that they'd rolled it over. It got quite heated. And then Orange sent her a text <laughs> that says, you are so pathetic. You can't pay your bill. You blame other people. You are so pathetic, in capital letters. <laughs> Not so from pathetic. From Orange, like actually from Orange, <laughs> no. and using their kind of text facility. So um, no. this poor lady obviously was very disheartened and um, Orange have now uh, apologised. They've, sort, they've sort of apologised. I imagine they'd wiped the bill <laughs> if she they if must you got do. that kind I mean, of um, that, I think that, that's kind of an it's an example really of what happens when it's you try and engage with people on a personal, on a personal level. level. Well, yeah. But obviously we expect so much now in terms of friendliness and support. This is this is just what absolutely would, the thing is all the recalls are recorded. I would love to know what the what she said. I bet there's two sides to this argument. Well, well there might be, bet, but there's no excuse for sending a message like that. From an official account. This is like number one customer service faux pas <laughs> extraordinaire yeah I'm going to be using Awful. this in my social media consultancy workshops. <laughs> yeah, Don't yeah, do yeah. this. Of all Tweet the from the official yeah. account. Yeah. Of all the things, I mean, it's, not, it's all right when they send you nice, friendly messages when you, yes, you know, I but, but not. Hi, we're putting your bill up this month. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Smiley face. Yeah. Oh, Such a cynic, John. Such a cynic. Comes with age, I guess. <laughs> oh, and the <laughs> hey, hey, hey. rollers. Yeah. I'm going to have to Google. I have no idea who you they are. You do know who they are. We're going to take a short break. <laughs> Back with more in just a moment. Right, you had no idea. Um, what is most important, though, Vicky, is that we um, we don't want a beer this morning. Thank heavens. We want a biscuit. Yeah, this actually makes me feel more normal. And let's be honest, anything that makes any of us feel more normal is a good thing. Um, a survey has shown that 30% um, of 18 to 24-year-olds actually prefer eating biscuits to wine or beer. And uh, we as British are a very special biscuit nation. Yeah, what sort um, of biscuit is it? Do we do on a, a Viennese world or well, a Well, apparently it doesn't really matter. I think, um, you know... Something you could dunk. Rich teas and things like that are quite positive. And they're saying that dunking biscuits actually improves their molecular structure. So um, I like that because I'm a biscuit dunker, oh, even, in, even in meetings. No, I tend to, I no, tend to not just in go meeting. for it. I know, I know. Ore Oreos. Oreos are amazing. Fun. They're amazing. Oh, it's also fantastic. the jeopardy that comes with it. Don't leave it in <laughs> it's too like long. roulette, it isn't it? It's like, is it going to still be cup? there or not? Yeah. Um, the other thing I like was apparently, according to this survey, the kind of chocolate biscuit you like mm. says a lot about your mood. So apparently if you reach for a milk chocolate biscuit, you are on average a happier person. If you reach for a dark chocolate biscuit, you are a more melancholy and bitter person. Who has this choice so, of biscuit yeah. in their cupboard? I certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I like dark chocolate biscuits, so I'm slightly concerned now that although I am affirmed I in liking biscuits more than alcohol, I'm, I'm, I have an issue because I like dark chocolate. I like a dark chocolate digestive. So do I. Or a dark chocolate hobnob. Legendary. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hobnob. Uh, hold the front page. I'll tell you what, we're hitting all the top <laughs> stories <laughs> this <laughs> morning. I never, I never buy news. biscuits. I do not have biscuits in the house. Do you know? Did you know that well, the average Britain has two all. a day? So if you really? had two a day, you would be average. Oh. I never have biscuits or sweets in the house. But that oh, come is, on! No, 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 no but it backfires because then at about 7 o'clock in the evening, mm. I think, right, I've got yeah. to go Nip to the, the shop to go and get <laughs> some biscuits. Yeah. So. Yeah. I can't stop. Once a packet's opened, I can't really? stop. 
So I've got, I've got to really watch my way and watch what I eat. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare, let me tell you. Um, not as bad as what's going on with Dancing Grand, though, and BGT. Oh, look, you I mean, the poor old um, Paddy Jones has cracked a rib. So she, and she was, um, whose golden buzzer was she? Help me out on Britain's Got Talent. Can't say. It was Amanda's, Amanda's sorry? Amanda's. Am Amanda's golden buzzer. So she's cracked a rib, a 79-year-old lady, and simply can't compete anymore. They haven't said oh. who, she's gonna who oh. she's going to replace. But it allows me to talk about Britain's Got Talent, which is, who do we think is going to win? I've not seen any of no. it what? this year. People, 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 at people home. say that it's been quite <laughs> a weak series, in actual fact. I think it's been fantastic. I have loved every single solitary minute of it. I my, agree. John. My daughter is immersed in it, and we, we're going for the... Who's the two young kids? Bangs, Bang and Ulfson or something. Oh, yeah. What are they called? <laughs> Not Bang and Ulfson. No, called? that that would be a brand. <laughs> really famous... Yeah. Other, other yeah. speakers are ba yeah. Yeah. Ba bands, What are they called? And bands the two and two young chimes, boys. And chimes, yeah, chimes and melody or... Doorbells or something. Doorbells this is not what? making me check this out. <laughs> yeah. They're really good, but I just can't remember what their name is. But they're excellent. They are really fantastic. They're, they're, they're unforgettable. Yeah, we had these there. two on, uh, these from last year. We had these two guys on the show uh, are they a few the months opera ago. Singers? What a nice pair of brothers. Were they, they really? Are. Really, really nice guys, actually. There you go. And there's a couple Hello. of very good opera singers in this uh, year as well, actually. Well, have your vote later in the series. We're out of time. We'll oh, see no. you at 8.30. Look yeah. forward to that, but a quick check on the weather with Isabel.